Hey YouTube, it's been a while so I decided to post another video. I, uh, I'm approaching this in a very uh, impromptu kind of fashion. I'm just going to say anything that comes to mind and if at the end of it I review it and it makes sense, then I'll probably post it. If not, then, then you won't be watching it. I've been reading a book, I just started, I'm just a little bit into it. I'm part of the Slow Readers Guild, you see. Um, so any time I try to read, it's very slow. But I have just started the book about something called neuroplasticity. And neuroplasticity is this notion that the mind precedes the brain, and the mind can create some sort of force that actually changes the neurology of the brain. It's an interesting thing. Um, this, uh, what is he? He's a uh, psychiatrist with some background in neurology uh, that did these kinds of, these studies on people with uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. And this kind of research, although I haven't been, I haven't read far enough in to read his research precisely, um, similar stuff along those lines can be seen, or that I've read about, is seen like in acquired brain injury cases where a person might injure a part of their brain and such that they have some sort of, some sort of, dis or not disease, some sort of disability, and they are able to um, you know, grow out of it. Their brain is able to compensate. And you say, well, that's just the brain healing. But here's the interesting part, is that the brain will not actually heal itself, so to speak, um, or compensate, I guess is a better way to say it. Say that you have, if you can imagine the brain in a spot somewhere on the brain that is destroyed because of a, motor, motor, a motorcycle accident or whatever, um, the brain and its synapses and its neural network will actually form around that hole, kind of like how roots of a tree will grow around a rock, um, and and allow the person to sometimes return to a very functional state of mind, such that they can be released from any kind of inpatient center that they're enrolled in, um, and go back to the community. What this guy's talking about, though, is the fact that in any of these cases the person has to be aware that there is a problem. There are certain kinds of um, disabilities that you can acquire with brain injuries. Brain injuries are really a crazy, crazy thing and I don't know enough about it to really speak to much competence. Uh, all I can say is is speak from experience with the, the kinds of clients that that I have known over the past, and I can't talk about it a whole lot because of legal issues. There's this whole HIPAA laws that um, probably keep me from saying what I intend to say. But, so to keep this sparse, so that I'm not in any violation, there are brain injuries that can keep you from being aware that you actually have a brain injury. It has a lot to do with, um, well, it could it'd be a number of things, um, a number of different things that could get screwed up to the to the point in which you you aren't aware of your injury. The point of this all is that the brain does not compensate when you are not aware of the injury. Now that's interesting. You see, you don't have to be aware of a cut for it to heal, but in the brain you have to be aware of it. Now why? Well, how do how do you make sense of that? Well, this guy that believes in neuroplasticity is saying somehow that there is a mind, a non-physical thing that occupies no space and has no sense of time. Yet, this mind has the ability to create a force in which or uh, by which the neural network of a brain can correct itself or compensate for some sort of injury. The reason I bring this up is I, I've been getting um, a few comments, a few messages from people about some of my older videos. And you know what's great about my videos is as soon as I post it, I later have a different thought and think, no, no, that doesn't make sense anymore and, and I want to, I I've, I've almost deleted my entire 
in my entire channel uh, more than once. So I will respond, of course, if I can, but uh, know that my mind might have changed, and I'll, I'll try to make a point of that if, if people want to make some sort of uh, discourse. At any rate, the comments have been focused around the nature of mind, and with my last video, or one of my last videos, um, speaking about mind, I figured that I needed to talk about it a little bit more in length, because these, these videos are, are so terribly short, and I would much rather just be able to speak with all of you over a cup of tea um, in some room, and then it would be much easier. But since we can't do that, the mind, if it exists, it has to not only um, be separate from the brain, but it has to actually precede the brain. Now, why is that? Well, you see, if you say that the mind is the makeup of the brain, or a byproduct of the brain, which is generally a, um, an accepted position in our postmodern world, um, the problem is, is that you can't account for these kinds of these kinds of things that is unique to the mind and that is not unique to any kind of physical manifestation or any kind of physical phenomenon. What I'm talking about is this. A camera can see, if we want to use that word, that's not a good word to use, but the camera can detect the color red, just like your eyes can. However, unlike the camera, only you are aware of that actual color. See, when we talk about the brain we have to talk about it in mechanical terms. That's because that's the only way physical things work. If we talk about the brain in mechanical terms, and we can't talk about awareness, and when I did my video about the black box, essentially what I'm saying is that what makes you distinctly human and what makes you not a biological computer is because you have an awareness of your, of your knowledge. You know that you know things. and. Um, and that's something that computers, no matter how, how fantastic they might be or how futuristic you want to hypothesize or theorize, no computer would be able to, to do that. That's the simple way of, of explaining it, that you know your knowledge, that you know that you can know or, or whatever. Essentially, it boils down to a sense of awareness. And although animals certainly can be aware of things and that's how they learn, um, and even though you and I have the ability to learn the same way as animals do, we have what I would assume to be a, an additional feature. And maybe animals have this, but I don't think that they do. Um, our additional feature is the ability to be aware. And, and it is the ability to be aware of the non-physical. And that's the, the bridge between the physical and the non-physical well, realm is our our mind, and specifically our awareness. Not the camera's awareness, not a dog's awareness, but human awareness. And awareness, in this sense, has a regard for things like the law of non-contradiction and the law of the excluded middle, which you don't see anywhere else. You don't see in a camera, you don't see in an animal. And the only way that could happen is if you had some sort of sense of the non-physical realm, and that's the mind. So I hope that helps. Um, I'm sure I'll make plenty more videos about it. Uh, take care.